Hey everyone and welcome to the next update for tvOS 14. So I believe this is only the second actual update that I've had for Apple TV um, running tvOS 14. So if we just come into general and about the, is it about? Yeah, so tvOS 14, just, where is it? Just here. So the version number we're running currently is 18J5344D. And the update, um, I didn't actually try it on the same day because um, basically the day the updates came out, I think it was on a Wednesday, preoccupied with obviously the the league win for, and the league presentation for Liverpool. So I was, I was basically just completely concentrating on, on the football. Um, so as a result, I didn't really update this until maybe the Thursday or the Friday. So. Um, having updated it, um, first thing I noticed straight away is um, on the original tvOS beta, um, what was happening was the switching between anything and the screen savers was very bad. So one thing, I'm not sure if I actually mentioned it or not, but basically what, one thing that I did note that was whenever you went into a particular app and then you went out of it, the switching was very slow initially. So that was the first thing. So switching between apps was very slow and it had this kind of bug where every time that the screensaver would kick in, the screen would temporarily go black for a long period of time. So it'd, it'd basically be like maybe two or three seconds, which for the Apple TV is actually very noticeable. Um, even though that doesn't sound a lot uh, to most people, for the Apple TV, anybody who's used to using Apple TV, that's actually quite a long period of time. Um, so it just felt a little disjointed. Um, everything worked, that was the pleasing thing. So none of the apps, um, as, I, as I was worried about prior to actually installing it, um, nothing actually fell to, fell to load and I didn't have a single app that actually cra crashed. Um, however, having said that, Netflix is the only one that I've actually tested for actually streaming media in here and that did have a bug and the bug was basically when you could play, you could go into it from fresh. So obviously it's, it's there right now. So if I close everything out, um, what I could do is I could basically go in and play something um, from the basically first time you've gone into the app. You could play it, you could go through episodes. Um, as I've mentioned in one of my previous videos, I was watching um, Snowpiercer. Uh, but what would happen is if you came out of it, say for example, you, you want to just go have a cup of tea or something and you'd close it down. When you then came back into it, what it would do is it'd kick up an error message uh, for the first few times you actually tried it. And the only way to get around that was literally just do a reset of the Apple TV by basically holding the menu and the uh, TV button uh, together. So basically that would just reset um, the TV. And once it came back on, you could then uh, close the app, go back in and it worked perfectly fine. And same thing again, you could continue watching episodes and it would play through each one perfectly fine. Um, so that was obviously just a bug. I'm not, I've not actually tested it since um, updating, but obviously it wasn't the end of the world because the app itself technically was still working. It was obviously just something um, that was broken in tvOS 14. So hopefully that's that's been fixed. But like I said, every app that I tried was working. So it wasn't a case of um, previous builds where I could literally go into Infuse and the, the app would just crash. Infuse obviously being one of the ones that got updated for tvOS 14 before tvOS 14 was even officially released. There was an update that came out basically on the day. So before you could even actually install it, it was already ready to go. Um, but there have been a few things. So obviously I'll go into YouTube first. So obviously the thing with YouTube was 4K playback. So what we'll do is we'll go into a 4K video and let me just mute the audio. And what we'll do is we'll come down to options. And as you can see, that is still restricted to 1080p. So even though some viewers, uh, well, sorry, some uh, YouTubers have reported that they are getting the 4K option out on my uh, tvOS version it's still not giving me the option for anything above 1080p so unfortunately that's not something that's working yet as I've said I'm not too worried about that because I am hopeful with it being on the official release um, documentation that you actually had on, on the website for Apple um, I'm confident that that is something that probably will come so it's not something even if it's not um, activated straight away as some people have, have 
post it in the comments. It may be as simple as YouTube, it might be YouTube side. So it might be the uh, Google side where they need to actually just update the app and enable whatever the new kind of configure um, compatibility mode is um, around how they're, they're actually getting it to work. Because I don't believe it's as simple as one or the other compromising. I think it's something um, halfway uh, in terms of how they've actually agreed on getting it to actually play back in 4K. So that was the first thing. Now the other one was HomeKit. So as most most of you know, and as I mentioned in my previous one, I'm most mostly concerned about HomeKit. Um, so let's take a look at that. So there is no, there's still no Home app, which I'm, I'm I am still disappointed about because I would like a actual home app. However, there's kind of, if you hold the TV button, obviously you come into the, the control center on the TVOS essentially, and you come down and you've got a little home icon here. So essentially that they're, they're kind of implementing part of it. However, when you click on that, what happens is all of these are still only scenes. You cannot access any of your devices yet. Um, whether this will get updated in the coming uh, updates, I don't know. Um, I'm hoping that it does because obviously the main the main thing about this is the fact that I want it so then you can actually Right, so I've actually had to refilm this part of the video because uh, for some reason the video footage just disappeared from my iPhone So as I was saying, we'll come on to the home kit section and if we just come into it, as I was saying, um, all of these, this bottom section essentially is still limited to scenes. So despite the fact that I've got um, probably around 40 to 50 actual home kit um, sensors and uh, light switches and light strips and cameras and things like that, uh, none of those actually show up in this section apart from the fact that you've, you've got the scenes. So um, this is something that I'm, I'm hoping that they do actually change and by the time the public release comes out, they actually release it so then you can access all of your devices essentially. So the, the back LEDs that I've got on at the moment, they're, they are f um, accessible through HomeKit. So I would like all of those kind of things to show up rather than having the scenes. I think at the moment, what how they have it on the iPhone and iPad, where you have like a summary at the top um, the top section um, and then have your items listed below I think it'd be a better option and rather than having your cameras at the top uh, mirror that down to the although on, on the TV I don't really mind it too much having the cameras at the top but I, I'd, pref I'd prefer having that type of layout where you do actually have access to the the items themselves rather than just uh, scenes now coming on to the cameras previous videos none of the cameras would have shown up because I didn't actually have any home kit cameras I have some videos coming up on the channel uh, with regards to this whole setup. So basically subscribe and hit the bell icon for those and you'll be notified as soon as they're live. So if I just click into one, well actually before we do, so as you can see just in the bottom right of each window, it says live and that is actually an updating live view. So as you can see, there's cars passing by um, and basically you're getting an, uh, a live view of that particular camera. Both of these cameras are actually battery powered cameras, so they're not recording 24 seven. So that slight delay that you get when you actually click on it is basically the camera just booting up. Now with this being an outside camera, obviously as you can see right now, we actually have some really bad weather. Um, and you can see we've got a few water droplets on, on the lens. Um, but um, in terms of implementation and everything with HomeKit, Something that is new for beta two that wasn't there in beta one was, so right now you've got the two little dots at the bottom and that's literally if you just touch the, the touchpad on the remote. And now you can actually swipe left and right to go through various different cameras. As I say, this slight lag, so that's now live. So that it was maybe two or three seconds. Um, that's down to the camera actually booting up as opposed to HomeKit just lagging. Um, let me just turn the volume, see if we get any audio. Yeah, so we do get a little bit of audio. You can just about hear some some car noise. Uh, sorry, some rain noise. And you can just about hear as the car passes by. Um, what I have noticed with, with both of the, the cameras is it dulls down um, any just general sound, so rainfall, all that kind of stuff, and it'll amplify voices. So I think that's done intentionally as part of the firmware within the cameras, as opposed to being something to do with HomeKit. Um, that, and that's, I'm guessing, just to make it a better improve, uh, performance um, and make it so then you can hear voices a lot clearer. 
generally but um, as, as I say if with regards to HomeKit and the implementation so you can literally just swipe left and right um, you've got a slightly different icon in the bottom bottom left I think that was actually different on the previous beta I only had it on that for a short time before uh, basically when I installed these before I actually um, upgraded to tvOS beta 2 uh, TVS 14 beta 2 so obviously I'd, I've not got much reference and I don't have any actual video footage of it but um, right now performing very well what I would like to see is um, also an option um, this is why I say they really need a home app on the Apple TV because they're, they're, they're missing a trick so much in terms of imagine having um, similar to how you actually have it on certain apps on the iPad where you rather than viewing one camera at a time you literally just have it so then you can view all of them at the same time and that would that would just be such a, a better experience at the moment obviously in order to switch between them I have to actually swipe and give it a few seconds for them to boot up imagine if you could just have all your cameras all, all of your actual icons um, all of your, your buttons, your switches, your lights, uh, fans, electrical outlets, all of that kind of stuff actually showing up on, on a single page, similar layout. I would probably suggest more towards the iPad. The iPad's better, probably a better layout uh, rather than the iPhone when it comes to carrying it across to the TV because rather than being a, a more lance, uh, portrait viewpoint, you, obviously you're looking at a 16 by nine aspect ratio. So I think the iPad kind of layout would be better suited to the, the Apple TV. Um, but, but as long as we get control over everything rather than just having scenes and the scenes do work um, I don't really want to click it right now because basically I don't, I don't uh, a lot of them because they are scenes they do multiple things so some of them t for example turn off the TV and things like that and that's why it, it'd be a lot easier where if you had access to just the individual buttons I could literally just turn on the or turn off the backlight so I could turn on this room light and things like that rather than having to do two or three different things um, but as I say not a lot of changes um, you've got a few other basic things like a few icon changes for your music app stuff like that stability wise it has been quite good as I say um, nothing even though I had that slight bug with Netflix um, no, nothing actually crashed so it wasn't a case of you were watching something and it, the app would just randomly crash um, none of the apps have actually done that so for that from that point of view um, it has been quite good so hopefully going forward we do get a few more um, more substantial updates in terms of giving us more things that make make a bigger impact essentially so doorbell integration I believe is something that is also coming um, so when when your doorbell rings it just brings up a little pop-up in the top right telling you um, basically somebody's at the door and I think it's similar it does something similar to this so it'll literally just swipe in and this whole top section is it'll probably have your, your image of the doorbell um, and I think it, they may even have it so then you can interact with it through the microphone in your uh, TV remote so that that would be quite useful as well so um, but as I say those kind of things as and when they they become available I'll go over it again um, any major changes that I do notice I'll, I'll keep posting videos I'll, I'll do uh, an update video for every new beta that is released unless there's nothing to, to of note to talk about in that case obviously I'll, I'll probably just skip it but if obviously for those out there that don't want to risk this on your own devices just as I say hit that subscribe button hit the bell icon and that way you'll be notified every time I post a new video and you can stay up to date with everything that will come out once the um, actual public release is is released to everybody and available. As always, thanks very much for watching.